In 2008, the first commercial robotic milking platform was rolled out on Stradbrook Farm in Mid Canterbury. The farm has become a showcase for dairy technology. Special adaptations have been made to adjust the existing setup for New Zealand's pasture based farming system. Dairy New Zealand have had a farm at Ruakura for six years where they had been researching robotic milking under a grazing based system. We were the first commercial farm last year in New Zealand to actually adopt robotic milking, which was followed secondly by another farm in Southland a month or so later. So, you know, it's working here now in New Zealand under a grazing based system, which is quite unique to many parts of the world where, you know, cows are housed inside. The economics of robotic milking are quite significant. There are many benefits to robotic milking, and we perceive these not only in money terms, but also in terms of lifestyle. Obviously, this is our first year on this farm under a grazing-based system in terms of getting some real numbers on economics. But we see those benefits being mainly in extracting more milk, so better milk production. We see it in better animal health, reduction in lameness, reduction in mastitis. And both those, those two key areas there of animal health, we've seen significant, um, we've virtually seen nil cases of that here on the farm this season. So when's the next service call? I want to do uh, software updates yeah. on all the machines sometime in the next week. Yeah. The cows are treated as individuals and are able to reach their full potential, aided by a consistent feed pattern and fresh pasture. Paul Bedell is in charge of the technical side of the system. So I'll be responsible for the machines and making sure the service is getting done and everything's up to keep and setting up you know, new farms and new technology with the other farmers in the area that are going to adapt it. It's basically a free choice milking system and the cows kind of come to the machine whenever they choose to. When a cow enters the shed, it decides whether she is or is not allowed to milk and then she'll either be sent on out of the shed to a, a new pasture. If she's not allowed, if she is allowed, she stays in the shed. And she's basically not allowed to leave until she enters the robot. And then once she enters the robot, the machine's gonna identify her and decide how much meal she's allowed to have. It's gonna wash her udder and it's gonna hook up each quarter and you know, start milking her. The max cell count will be determined, milk color will be determined. If the milk's suitable for consumption will be determined based on certain characteristics. So all the data that's gathered comes on each individual quarter, not the whole udder. They come in to milk and they get new grass. And then once that grass is gone, then they come back to milk to get new grass. When we first started the training, we didn't really have very many mechanical problems. Mostly hoses here and there where cows were kicking a little bit when we started. Basically, the training and getting cows used to actually coming from the field to the shed was the hardest thing because the cows were so used to, to basically someone coming out to the pasture to gather them up to come to the barn to milk. And we were basically asking the cows, you need to come on your own. And it's a big change for them. This herd of cows was an older herd that we purchased. And they weren't young cows, so they were basically a little bit more stubborn set in their ways, and they'd never eaten grain before. It took us about a month and a half before we finally got them on a meal system where they would actually eat meal. So we really struggled in the beginning trying to get things clicking. I think for all that's happened and everything that we've changed that we've done really well, better than, than I expected. You know, we were aiming more for like a 550, 600 kg solid mark. And I still think we'll probably hit about 500, which is, which is a good effort considering it's our first year. But I mean, basically we've, we've got all of our systems in place. We know exactly what we need to do, how we need to graze the cows, how they're milking. So next season, when we get started, everybody's already trained up and we should be able to just bang right in and, and get off to a really good start. The astronaut robotic milkers serve the cow's needs rather than the farmer's schedule. The sensors also have the added benefit of picking up health issues more quickly than dairy staff. When all the other conventional farms are milking early in the morning, these cows like to be away from the shed, so when we arrive in the morning, this, is, this place is very, very quiet. Generally, they don't like to wake up early. And then the flow sort of starts on from nine onwards right through to the afternoon. And they sort of quiet down in the afternoon. Um, again, when conventional farmers are milking in the afternoon, these guys are quietly sitting down 
doing what they want. And then during the night, we have a lot of activity. Lameness is very, very little compared to a conventional system where you have one of your workers on a bike up behind them, pushing them hard, where you occur lameness. Just free walking of the cows is the main reason for that. Mastitis is also very low on this farm. With the machines milking individual quarters, there is no over milking or no under milking. When one quarter is finished, the cups are taken off. We're on a conventional farm. If the quarter is finished early, she continues to get milked in that quarter until the whole cow is pretty much finished milking. With all the technology we have and the robots being able to identify where the problems are, we can pick them up very quickly and target those certain cows that may have an issue. We have a computer system called a CRS where the robots will tell th there is a problem. And then we have a list of people who the robots can contact. And whoever's on the list will be phoned up and given a list of messages what the problems actually are. If you don't respond to the call, um, it will ring you back in half an hour. Um, if you do not answer the call, it will ring you back until you do answer. The system is highly efficient. The initial challenge for farm manager Ryan Carr was getting the cows used to it. When we design the farm, we put the water troughs up the track, and that's one a centre for the cows to come out of the paddock, to come up the track and have a drink. And that was the first stage of training the cows, to get them out of the paddock to come up to the track and to have a drink. So we, when we first started, we had the troughs just, just out of the gate, so they learnt to come out the gate and to have a drink of water. And then as they slowly got trained, we moved the troughs closer to the sheds. The reason why the, the cows don't come into the shed because they either haven't learnt how the system works or they'll never come to it. It's a real challenge to get it right, to feed the cows enough so that, that they're all full that they move to the shed, get milked, and then go out and get a fresh break. And I think next year, when we're not training so many cows, we'll really be able to put our focus on getting that part of it right. And it's a good challenge. Everybody needs a challenge in life, and, and um, yeah, I think we will, we will crack it. It's, um, we'll take time, though. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.